Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. This video is part two of a per unit tax levied on consumers and what that looks like on a graph. With that said, let's get into it. So to begin, let's start with our axes, our general supply and demand curves, and then we're going to label everything on a general supply and demand graph. So once again, the y-axis is price, the x-axis is quantity, supply is my upward sloping blue line and demand is my downward sloping red line. And as you can see, my equilibrium is denoted by P star and Q star. So unlike part one, in this video, we'll be looking at real values. So we need our supply and demand equations. And they are as follows. The supply equation is quantity supplied is equal to 3P and the demand equation is quantity demanded is equal to 50 minus 2P. Now the first step is going to be to calculate equilibrium. And this is super simple. I'm sure you've done this a million times. We equate quantity supplied equal to quantity demanded because at equilibrium, the quantities are the same, they're Q star. And when I do this, I get QS is equal to QD. And then I simply sub in the equation. So 3P is equal to 50 minus 2P. Rearranging, I get 5P is equal to 50. And then finally solving for P star, I get $10. And if I take that P and substitute it into either the supply or demand equation, either one will give me a Q value of 30. So now I know that my P star and my Q star or my equilibrium values are $10 and 30 respectively. So now I can put those onto my graph. Now this video is looking at a per unit tax on consumers. Now this exact magnitude of the tax will end up being $5, but we're going to go over that later in the video. What we do know is that a per unit tax on consumers will negatively impact their real income. And if real income goes down, then the demand curve will shift. So now we have two demand curves. I'm going to make one of them green and denote it as demand after tax so that we can tell them apart. However, now that I have a new demand curve, I also have a new equilibrium, which is down here at the new P star and Q tax. If I have a new demand curve, then of course I must have a new demand equation as well. So let me take a look at what that is. My supply has not changed. It's still quantity supplied is equal to 3P. But as you can see, my green equation at the bottom, QDAT or quantity demanded after tax is equal to 40 minus 2P. So my next step is going to be to calculate the new equilibrium now that my demand curve has shifted left or my real income has decreased because of that $5 per unit tax. So in this case, I'll set QS equal to QDAT. Substituting in the equations, I get 3P is equal to 40 minus 2P. Rearranging, I get 5P is equal to 40. And then finally solving for P, I get P star is equal to eight. And if I take that P star equals eight and substitute it into the QS or the QDAT equations, I will get an answer of 24. So that is the new equilibrium point where the old supply curve intersects the new demand after the tax. So let me put this on my graph. You'll notice that P star is equal to PF, which is the price the firms receive, which is equal to $8. And the quantity traded in the market is 24 units. However, the price that the consumers pay is actually up here. And this point is five units higher. So we'll denote it as PC and PF plus the amount of the tax is equal to PC. And in this case, PF or the price the firms receive is $8. The tax is $5. And therefore the price the consumers must pay is simply eight plus five, which is $13. So PC is equal to 13. Now you could also find this value of 13 by substituting a Q value of 24 into the original demand equation, which was 50 minus two P. If you do this and solve for P, you will also get 13. So there's two ways to solve that. Now we know from part one that this pink rectangle right here is actually my tax revenue, but now we want to look at how to calculate it. Now, lucky for me, tax revenue is simply a rectangle and that's easy to solve using the formula for solving for the area of a rectangle. So tax revenue is equal to length times width. And it's nice and simple because my length and width are right here. So tax revenue is equal to 24 times five. Therefore, my tax revenue is equal to $120. Now we notice here that the quantity of 24 at this new intersection is strictly less than our original equilibrium, which was a quantity value of 30. And so that's going to create this yellow triangle right here, which we denote, of course, as our dead weight loss. And I want to show you how to calculate this in the video as well, numerically. So calculating dead weight loss is simply calculating the area of this yellow triangle. Recall the area of a triangle is simply equal to half times base times height. So my dead weight loss is equal to that formula. Now my base and height of the triangle are right here. So substituting them into the equation, I will get dead weight loss is equal to one half times five 
times six. And once I solve all of that, dead weight loss is simply equal to $15. Once again, this is part two looking at real values. However, if you watch part one, it will show you all of this without the numbers if that's easier for you to understand. We hope that you found this video helpful. And if you did, let us know by liking the video, subscribing to the channel, and of course, let us know in the comment section what sort of economic topics or homework questions you'd like to see us cover in the future. Thanks for watching this video and we'll catch you in the next.